Well, we're on the rear aspect of the barn conversion this morning, looking out on a very peaceful and nice part of the garden that we're starting to appreciate a lot more this year. This area has been the old kitchen garden for many years. But now with the development that we've done into this barn, knocking it through and attaching it onto the house, this has now become, well, we're still calling it the kitchen garden, but it's taking on a much more floral aspect than culinary aspect. Let's go and have a little look, see what we've got planted in this new area. The young rose that's been planted out here is done a massy, growing really nicely, but still very small. It's to match one on the opposite side of the planting, which we'll show you in just a second. And at its base, we've got this annual dahlia. I'm hoping it's going to overwinter. If I give it a good top dressing or lift it, it should certainly keep going. But it's a lovely, low, compact form, this. I don't know the variety. It was just bought as a potted dahlia. And beyond it, a little, what I always call as lamb's ear beautiful silver leaf just speckled with the dew this morning. Finished flowering several months ago but this just will I hope not be frosted too early and just give us this beautiful effect. Little white dots coming up here. Beautiful splash of light freshness. This is a little Achillea called Cottontail. It's taken very well in here. It'll sell seeded bronze fennel coming through it as well. Just behind it is the daisy I moved earlier in the season. Big full double white now, being cut back hard, but beautiful young growth coming up. We've got a lot of self seeded bronze fennels in this garden. It's a plant that's been growing here for several years, but gives this wonderful structure at this time of year with the lower under planting. Now almost finished. This is really originally planted as a herb border. Here we have some lovely fresh growth on these chives. Now they've been watered, been severely droughted this border over summer. It's not been an easy place for us to water. Lovely little perennial flowering daisy that we're trying to propagate all around the place. We saw this at Summer Laden several years ago. I'm hoping it will form as good a big clump as we've got in the courtyard where it's been established now for a couple of years. So we're trying to encourage that to spread around. This marjoram now just about over a couple of weeks ago was a mass of beautiful light mauve flowers and the bees were really enjoying it. Second flush on this lovely tall plant I can't remember the name of it I always get this confused with a flowering thistle but it's not we have bought several of these this summer and they are getting established nicely this was an absolute mass of color in June had a severe cut back and has now come back with this summer being so warm and extended the peonies in this border have really struggled the soil here really has taught me a invaluable lesson in terms of the value of soil improvers by putting some mushroom compost as a top dressing on this which we did earlier in the season everything has revived and we should see hopefully some good growth over the next couple of months before we get frosting these dahlias have been absolutely spectacular this year haven't done much in previous seasons again i think because of the quality of the soil here just been nutrient deprived and also droughted it just dries out our sandy soil so quickly the matching pair of the dahlias we showed you when we started again just planted in here and a fennel plant not the bronze one this time but a green fennel coming up behind with this beautiful fresh growth going away it's a variety of dahlias planted in here that have all been in here for three or four years now and haven't really done much this border earlier was a complete mass of oxeye daisy. Yeah, here it is, we've cut this back severely. We are thinning it out as well to try and give these dahlias some chance of light and compost. I think this is probably 
Bishop of Landaff. And it's bright red flowers. There's a whole mix of colours in here. Planted as a hot border mix, really. They're coming on, and I think we are going to become quite enthusiastic about planting further dahlias in this patch over the next couple of weeks because if I can get hold of them in flower you can see exactly where to pop them in there's a massive bulb planted in this border as well so we're hoping next spring it's going to give a real spectacular display from the picture window behind me lovely crop of apples coming on on this it is a mixture of roses planted in this hedgerows and fruit trees. We've got a variety of different roses in here. This is Generous Gardener coming up, one of my all-time favourite roses. Just giving a little second flush, but look at the strength of the growth coming on this one. It really is quite a vigorous rose and one of the most beautiful things, features of this rose is its early spring foliage when it breaks with this beautiful you can see it here late summer exactly the same lovely deep red stems and the lurly leaves as they come out really do give a complete flush of red on this hedgerow which in its own right is worth going for but of course with roses it's all about the flower and here we have this beautiful late flowering buds forming and this should give us a spectacular display. This border is looking quite nice considering it's been such a droughted season here. The picture window on the back of the barn now gives one of my favourite seating positions and views out over this area of the garden. We've got hostas in pots on the back which this summer has been a lifesaver for them. It's been so hot elsewhere, a lot of damage has occurred through just droughting and the sheer heat of the hostas. But on this aspect, I think they're going to be fine and we'll probably overwinter them here as well. The old butler sink out of one of the barns has been rescued, repositioned with hot and cold running water. Much to these two's disgust, that is where they get bath these days. And in this weather, they're not too upset about that and are all the better for it. This little border here was my task yesterday. Again, we've got the Dunham Massey rose in the foreground coming up. This is the mature version of the one we showed you at the very beginning, which we planted to give us that symmetry. And on the back here, this rose, an absolute thug. Do not plant this if you're in a small area where you're walking past too closely and need to squeeze past. This is Ethel. I think it's either a David Austin or a Peter Beale variety. Gives a single flush, an absolute glorious flush of powder, powder pink sprays of small rosebuds and flowers. But the thorns on it are an absolute nightmare they will catch on anything they are extremely sharp extremely florid and the growth on this it will quite easily put on 20 foot on a spike in a season so we have tamed it back severely here two uprights with three wires between them there is a pear tree in the middle of there which because it got the light this season and the rose was completely knocked back by the builders actually fruited the best it's ever done and along the base we've planted this lovely little purple aster, low aster, small little florets of buds still coming on on this, which we hope will get established here and form nice clumps in a sort of hedge-like form on the edge of this pathway along the back of this barn. And it's coming together. That's the next barn which will be undertaken in May or June next year. And then the second phase of this garden development is going to be the old raspberry runs and rhubarb areas that we've shown you in several videos over the seasons. And that will gradually become more of a cutting garden as opposed to a fruit and kitchen garden. Thanks for watching.